How are you doing today, Lim? Doing good. How are you, my brother? No complaints, Lim. It's a, it's a beautiful day in Cape Town. Um, so a few weeks ago, I had the pleasure of meeting up with this young gentleman, Lim Butler, for a quick chat about competitions, his coffee career, <laughs> and some other some other bits of information, which is going to be very entertaining. I'm excited to see this again. Um, before Lim and I chat, have a, have a look at the video over here. This season of All Stars Online is made possible by our season sponsors Brewista and Nutramilk and supported by Hario, Victoria Arduino and Mulconic. Thank you for the support. Hello and welcome folks to All Stars Online. My name is Winston Thomas and this week we are joined by none other than Mr. Lim Butler, who I like to call Lim B. Yeah. Uh, Lim. Would you, would you like to introduce yourself, Lim? Tell the good people a bit more about yourself. Sure. Um, thanks for having me on. I'm Lim Butler. I am one of the co-founders of Black and White Coffee Roasters. We started our company in 2017. Um, and that's just a culmination of 17 years in the industry, starting as a barista in a small cafe and then working my way through the ranks as barista manager and then moving over to a coffee roaster, uh, just starting in production. Uh, I've competed in competitions, barista competitions the entire time, um, uh, maybe eight seasons. And in 2016, finally won uh, and automatically qualified me as a WC all-star, which uh, has me here today. Sweet, man. Thanks, Lim. I was very privileged to see you perform in Dublin, um, one of the best performances I've seen. Um, for all of our viewing viewers watching, uh, there'll be an opportunity for all of you to ask questions. So please send your questions in, in the Q&A section near the chat box. Right? We have a poll for our audience. How well do you know your all-star? Right? So Lim is also an A, a DJ, B, a postman, C, a data or data analyst, and D, a professional dog walker. And, Lim, will you tell us the correct answer? Well, as much as I would love to be a professional dog walker, <laughs> I, uh, I don't like the rain or the snow, so I'm not a good postman. Um, and a, a data analyst, uh, that just sounds too boring. Sorry, all you data analysts out there, but, uh, I used to be a DJ. I guess I still am a DJ cause you know, I DJ the coffee events sometimes. So yeah, DJ. If I'm not mistaken, if you come to black and white on the right day, we can still catch you behind bar, but you've got quite a diverse role. What do you enjoy most about that role and the work that you do? Uh, I, I, I really enjoy um sharing what i know about coffee um mm -hmm. as much as i enjoy drinking it um I, I i love working behind the bar but um you know four years in a cafe i, I think i've had enough but one shift a week for me is great <laughs> i love the opening shift uh so you can always catch me in wake forest north carolina uh on sunday mornings okay um well yeah i, I I, I love sharing, you know, the knowledge because the knowledge was shared to me and I don't want to hog it all. So yeah, I'm, I'm willing to, to, you know, help people along their coffee journey as much as possible. That's cool. Well, if I, if I could get to Wake Forest on a Wake Forest on a Sunday, like I'd be there in a heartbeat, <laughs> in a heartbeat. And this is an interesting one. If you could create your own competition, Lim, your own competition, what would it be? You've only competed in Barista Comp, right? I'm yeah. I'm not sure if you've competed in anything else, but if you could create your own comp, what, what would that look like? Uh, so thinking of a competition that you know I would create, I actually did create one um, uh, this year, uh, recently. Uh, we had our third year uh, anniversary at Black and White. And okay. in honor of competition, since our season has been canceled, we wanted to put on a competition um, to be a little more inclusive with, with our community here in the U.S. And um, what we did was we created a competition where we send out five coffees anonymously, and uh, the competitors had to figure out 
the origin of the coffee and the processing method. And in the event of a tie, they had to guess the elevation as close as they could get to the elevation without going over. Okay. We, we had 300 competitors uh, register and it was $50 to enter. Um, Barista Series, they picked up the tab for the coffee and shipping it out to all the competitors. So we were able to donate the entire registration fee to Grounds for Health, which oh. is an amazing organization that does uh, um, cervical cancer screening for women in coffee producing countries. They have two projects going on currently, one in Ethiopia, one in Kenya. And we raised 15 grand for, for, this, for this cause. Wow. Uh, we will wait for them to pop us up and you tell us a bit more about this photo. Um, when, when exactly this photo was taken, where it was taken and what's, oh, yeah. what's happening, what's happening here, Lim? This was, uh, after All Stars Ethiopia, um, both James and I hopped on a flight with, uh, Getu. Getu Bekele is, um, he's a, a coffee buyer for counterculture in Ethiopia. Okay. And he invited us over to Jima to uh, see where coffee grows in the wild and um, see where the famous goat herder, Khalid, uh, discovered coffee. And this is a natural forest of coffee growing in the wild. Um, I've never seen anything like this before. And yeah, this was, yeah, I, I arrived. Uh, if, if everything ended at that moment, I would have been happy. Um, yeah. This is where I always wanted to be. I heard stories about coffee in Ethiopia, how it just grows in the wild. And I had a chance to uh, see it, to touch it. This is probably the section that I've been looking forward to the most. Um, this is a rapid fire section. Okay. So I'm going oh. to throw a couple of questions at you, Lim. You got you to give this to me nice and quick. It's going to try and go as fast as you can. Okay. Um, spooky skeleton or spooky ghost? Spooky ghost. Halloween. Laptop or PC? Laptop. Sunglasses or baseball cap? Sunglasses. Probably can't fit one on your head. Ninjas <laughs> or pirates? <laughs> <laughs> what? Ninjas or pirates? Uh, ninjas. Espresso or filter? Espresso. Donuts or cake? Donuts. Electric toothbrush or manual toothbrush? Manual. Headphones or big speaker? Ooh, ooh, ooh. headphones. <laughs> EJ, next one. Natural or washed? Natural. What's worse, laundry or washing up? Laundry. Marvel or DC? Marvel. Dark chocolate, milk chocolate? Dark chocolate. Power to fly or power to run fast ooh, or fast? Power to fly. Fly? Yeah. Window seat or aisle seat? I'll see. My, I I'll see. see. <laughs> me too. Me too. Me too. Um, iced coffee or hot coffee? Hot That's coffee. That's the last one. Hot coffee. Always hot coffee. Ice yeah. is a big thing though, right? You guys were doing your batch lattes and stuff. Yeah, yeah. The was one thing we had to do um, to, to help folks out. We, we batch our lattes in like half gallons. And uh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. That, that's, that's the last one, Lim. That's the last yeah. one. Yeah. Word. Very nice. Lem, 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 Lem B. Thanks yeah. so much for the chat, man. Um, yeah, yeah we, we got to know you a lot better. I think I got to know you a lot better. Um, I might have some follow-up questions <laughs> when I see you again to get some inside info. Um, but one last thanks to our sponsors. This season of All Stars Online is made possible by our season sponsors Brewista and Nutramilk and supported by Hario, Victoria Arduino and Mulconic. Thank you for the support. Lim, we're back. Such a fun chat. Do you remember the time, Lim? <laughs> yeah. Um, have, have any of your answers changed since then, Lim? <laughs> still, still natural or have you switched over to washed? What are you drinking right now? Uh, I'm drinking a natural process Costa Rican from Don Carlos. Yeah, it so it, it's still hasn't, natural. Hasn't changed. Although, okay. I mean, there's some great washed coffees out there, you know? Sweet. Um, so all your answers are still more or less the same. We've got a couple of more stuff coming up for Lim. The WCE All-Stars are from all around the world, and they are finalists from the World Coffee Championships. We sent them a few questions so we could get to know them a little bit better. And here's a, a short video of one of those questions.
Non ne ho la minima idea, poiché sono immersa nel mondo del caffè a 360 gradi e quindi eh, faccio veramente fatica a pensare a qualcosa d'altro. Se dovessi immaginarmi, probabilmente ho sarei a capo, fare la manager di qualche grossa importante azienda, sempre con progetti molto ambiziosi, o può essere che lavorerei nel fitness. I would uh, most probably have chosen to be a musician. I know this stuff very realistic and I would uh, not have become a super good musician, but uh, I always look up to artists. I think that what they do is the most important work there is because they, they give meaning to to all of us, making the world uh, pretty and beautiful. Well, probably I will be the most boring person ever working in some big accountant company after the economy studies, so it wouldn't be a very happy life without stop. I wouldn't mind being a teppanyaki chef, being there working with the people. It's like being on a stage uh, presenting every night, you know, cutting up the detail in the, uh, in the food that they're preparing. Um, but also it's a performance, right? And I love being able to perform, I love being on the stage, so I think being able to do that every night would be, uh, uh, would be a lot of fun. If I wasn't working in coffee, I will probably be working in wine, in the wine industry, or something to do with animals, like dogs and cats. I would probably still be working as a web designer. Luckily, coffee changed my life. Like, probably I would finish my nurse studies and do a nurse without borders uh, was my idea. Well, I'm a brewer inside, so if I weren't to brew coffee, I wish brew beer. Uh, I think I, I, I want to be a graphic designer or painter. Uh, really love the art. Some cool answers in that video, yeah. Lim. We didn't see you though. Um, if you weren't in coffee, what do you think you'd be doing? I'm gonna I'm gonna throw a curveball here, yeah? but you give your first answer. If you weren't in coffee, what what would you be doing? Um, I I don't know. I I don't know what I'd be doing. <laughs> um, I I had worked with uh, uh, kids uh, for for a number of years, um, both in in Boston and in in North Carolina. Um, yeah. So, but you know, that was that was uh, the nonprofit sector. So I, I didn't really enjoy the nonprofit sector that much. Okay. But. Okay. I think you'd make a great teacher in general. Um, I could see you as a coach as well. I don't know what sport, but I could see you as a coach as well. Um, and yeah. I guess a bartender, <laughs> which brings us to our to our next video, right? We've got a, a video that Lim made, um, and it's his signature beverage video. Lim, would you would you like to introduce your signature beverage video? Yeah, so in, in honor of the uh, pandemic and everyone being locked down, um, especially you know here, I was in, in lockdown for three months, which was oh. which was actually kind of great because I spent all that time with with my family yeah. and, and less time um, actually doing work. So um, yeah, so this is uh, the lockdown bliss. <laughs> What's up everyone, Lim Butler here representing Black and White Coffee Roasters as well as the WCE All-Stars. Virtual that is, I see you out there. Today we're going to make a signature drink and this is my favorite portion of the barista competition because you get really creative with coffee and ingredients mixed together. And just like all my signature drinks, I named them and I named this one. This is the Lockdown Blitz. A shout out to everyone out there in lockdown, being safe, being courteous, and loving your brothers and sisters. So, what do we need to make this drink? We're gonna need espresso. We're using something from Black and White Coffee Roasters. This is an anaerobic process, natural process coffee from Colombia called El Virgo. We're using an anaerobic natural because I want that natural processed fruitiness to come through those ingredients, giving you a nice impact on your taste buds. So if you can't find this coffee, look for some anaerobic natural processed coffees that are out there. Any one of them should work well. Big shout out to Mal Cooney for these amazing grinders here. You might be familiar with the E65S. This big boy is the E80 Supreme. 
and this is my favorite the e65 sgbw that's grind by weight yes folks finally a grinder that will weigh out our coffee we're just going to enjoy some awesome coffee and make this great beverage now the other piece of equipment that we have is something new from brewista i wish i had this piece of equipment years ago in competition when I was making my own nut milk for my sick bed. It was a hard, long, a lot of work kind of process where I was soaking raw pistachios overnight, then using my Vitamix to grind everything up, and then using this messy process of pressing out the milk through a cheesecloth. Wow, talk about a mess and a pain in the butt. But now Barista has something very cool, unique, and useful. This is Nutri-Milk. You don't have to soak your raw nuts anymore. You just throw them right in there, create a butter with the butter feature, and then you add some water to create your, your nut milk. So, what is our signature drink today? We're going to use some raw pistachio nuts. We have some dried cranberries. And we have a magnolia flower simple syrup. Now this is something owed to my 2016 barista competition. Now unless you live in the southeastern part of the United States, you're probably not going to be able to find any magnolia flowers. So what I recommend you do is get a nice floral jasmine tea and make a simple syrup. One part sugar, one part jasmine tea. It's that simple. Or what you could do is get some sort of floral honey. Like here's a lavender honey. That could be used. This is really cool. This is a, uh, a tea flower honey. And this is awesome if you can find something like this, a coffee flower honey, that could work as well. Something floral to make things nice and uh, you know effervescent. So with the Nutri-Milk, you get this amazing 200 delicious and healthy recipe book. Key word here is healthy. Uh, you have anything from butters, smoothies, milks, drips and spreads. Um, I haven't even gotten halfway through this book and I'm super impressed. Uh, I'm gonna do a version of the cashew milk that's in here, it's basically cashews and, and water. Uh, I'm gonna use 150 grams of raw cashews. See, I've got my notes right here. Here, let you take a little peek. Uh, I'm gonna use about not, I'm gonna use less than 946 mils of water. I'm gonna use about 800 mils of uh, filtered water, 60 grams of dried cranberries, and then about 50 grams of magnolia flour simple syrup. Again, if you don't have magnolia flowers, which I doubt most of you have, uh, you can use like an amazing jasmine tea, uh, any kind of floral tea. You can even use like rose water if you want. Now, if you want to spice things up, I highly recommend some sort of bourbon, uh, whiskey, scotch. That goes great with coffee and cashews. But it's a little early, so I'm going to hold off on this right now. All right, let's jump into this. We're going to add our cashews and our cranberries. There's a butter feature here. Just hit that. And okay, there we go. It wasn't locked in. Butter feature. 16 minutes. We're gonna start it up. We'll let that go for about 16 minutes and then we'll come back and check it out. Here's where you edit this. All right, so I've chilled about two double shots of espresso. 
each shot was a, were big boys. They were 50 grams each. So this is 100 grams of chilled espresso. I'm going to add right in there with all my other liquids. Add my top back. Lock it in. Now, we're going to mix. So it's finished mixing, hit dispense. And here it is folks, the Lockdown Bliss. Oh my. Creamy, nutty, the fruity coffee comes through. It binds with the cranberry, giving it a nice, this cashew cranberry nuttiness with a hint of florals. So, I hope you are able to recreate this and enjoy the lockdown bliss. Cheers. WCE All Stars. Malkunig, Ruista, and me. Lim B. Yeah, oh, man. man. That was... Yeah, that takes me back to, to Dublin. Um, that Magnolia <laughs> and all that kind of stuff it takes me back to your, your signature drink. Um, and it takes me back to the movie, because in the movie, um, Kyle goes through his stuff and you were there and it, yeah that's that's really cool i wish i could taste man i gotta get my hands on one of those um brewista uh gadgets um it, it was great because i mean you could you could do any any kind of nut milk and and um yeah where before i had to soak uh the raw uh like pistachios or cashews overnight i mean that takes that whole step out and yeah uh just compacts it right in a bunch of it it's, it's pretty amazing um so we're heading to the next part, and this is a very special part, right? Everyone's been sending in their questions. Um, while watching the video, I was checking out some of the questions as well. I don't know if you have, Lim. Um, they were asked you about your career in coffee, life, competitions, balanced, anything. Um, let's have a look, Lim. Would you, you, we're going to choose a couple of questions. Lim, you have a look. Um, some of them have been upvoted. Um, Lim, you have a look and tell us which question we're going to go for first. Um, let's see, a uh, guest 283, what inspires you in or out of coffee? Um, yeah, that, that's, uh, that's actually pretty easy. Um, I, I get inspired by, uh, community events, uh, anything that, that brings, uh, people closer together. That's what, yeah, that's what inspires me because, you know, after all, that's what, what coffee is about. It, it brings yeah. all kinds of people together. Um, I mean, just look at the All-Stars online. I mean, I, mean, I hung out with you in, in Johannesburg. Um, some amazing uh, deaf baristas as well. Um, and then, you know, uh, yeah. I, I spent a lot of time in Ethiopia and China too. So it's like events like the competition just brings people together and in any any kind of inspiration uh from community uh that's that's where I, I i thrive okay um and any any people specifically that that um inspire you um you <laughs> you're one ah. of them uh you won the <laughs> south uh african barista championship three times that's pretty dope um and you know I, I always look forward to seeing african baristas in the, the world on the world stage and hopefully yeah. i'll see you in the finals um some other people that haven't have inspired me uh was agneska she was actually yeah. on my team in all the competitive team to work like bar ships and oh yeah things like that and and, and the crew like team points um, she placed, I think, 20-something in um, 2016, and then a few years later, she wins the, the WBC. 
and um, I, I think she's she's a she's a strong uh, coffee professional out there. Yeah. Well, so um, I, I, I agree. Missed. Okay, Lim, let's check for a couple more here. Um, let's see. Let's go with I guess seven thirty. Why do you use the panda as your logo for black and white? Um, <laughs> yeah, this was uh, this was something that uh, stems back to going going to China. Um, okay. I did the All Stars, and it was it was in, in Guangzhou that I was really introduced to uh, the Chinese culture, not just Chinese culture, but the Chinese coffee culture, and um, and there were pandas everywhere. Um, when we started Black and White, I wanted an animal to represent uh, our brand. And it was a toss up between uh, the panda and uh, an orca. Uh, I thought killer whales were a little bit too aggressive. And I really liked, uh, you know, that that kind of docile, um, huggable uh, panda bear that I yeah. saw everywhere in China. And then I even got to do uh, All Stars Chengdu. Uh, the panda became, you know, our, uh, our, our, I guess, um, not necessarily mascot, but I guess mascot mm. for black and white, uh, because they're very rare and we're looking for really rare coffins. And, um, yeah, and it's black and white. So there you go. Uh, let's look for another one, Lim. Um, yeah. Man, there are some good questions here. What do you think? Um, there are some good questions. Um, there's one from Kirsty that see. I'd like to see answered. What can we expect from you in the oh, future? 730? Um, yeah. Well, we had really big plans for 2020 to uh, put more baristas into competition, um, but that kind of fell through. So uh, we, we, we still feel like it's, it's, it's a necessary thing to support baristas in competition because our, another company that supported me um, put me in front of the the proper equipment to to, to uh, prepare for a competition, and uh, we at Black and White we want to do the same thing um, for for baristas interested in competition. Uh, would love to work with Winston and get him to the uh, the final round in the World Barista Competition. <laughs> but but just to see uh, um, you know baristas who want to compete be able to compete. So in the future, we'll, we'll continue to work with uh, competitors. So coaching, um, support, um, and and then, you know, with the company, we, we continue to uh, build more cafes and, and not just any cafe. These are community-based cafes that uh, folks can really latch on to um, yeah. and just bring in some still amazing coffee from around the world. That's cool, man. Excited to see what the future holds for for them and for black and white. Let's do, let's do one or two more questions. All right. There's a couple uh, more that I see. What do you think? Someone, had, I, I saw a question somewhere. Um, someone asked, oh, here we go. Uh, guest 810, which country would you love to visit first as soon as the pandemic is over? It's over. Well, um, I owe a visit to Africa. Um, this year, I was supposed to be back in Cape Town to uh, go surfing with Winston. Um, so I would love to be that to be my first uh, uh, South Africa to be my first country to visit after the pandemic. Surfing with us, I, I can see the mountain from here. The <laughs> ocean's just around the corner. Um, so yeah, we'll we'll try and make that happen. Um, we'll see how, uh, how the next few months or the next year goes. Um, so South Africa, thank you very much, Tim. We are very honored to have you here. In the next couple of months, um, let's do one more. Let's do one more question. Let's do one more question. Um, what is it like to travel with the All Stars to different cities in the world? Any trip that was particularly meaningful? You've done quite oh. a few trips, I think, right? Mm, that's it's, uh, that's a tough one. They, they were all different and special in their own way. Um, man. Um, I, I would say Ethiopia was was probably the most impactful because of just being in the cafe as a young barista learning about coffee. Um, I, re I remember a specific story that um, you know one one of my mentors in coffee, Peter Giuliano, when he would be the coffee yeah. buyer when he was a coffee buyer for Counterculture, he would tell these amazing, powerful stories, and, and one about Ethiopia just stood out. 
in my mind about you know how coffee grows in the wild, how it was discovered by um, this goat herder here in the U.S. We we call him um, Caldi, but when I did um, All Stars Ethiopia, um, I learned that he is actually called Khalid. And one of the big things that stood out about that All Stars was meeting so many Ethiopian baristas who wanted to compete, but they didn't have a competition. And that stood out in my mind a lot because it was it was just like hunger. And I remember that hunger as as a young barista in 2005, I wanted to do really well in a competition. And yeah. I could see it in, in all of these baristas in Ethiopia. And we even had, I guess it was the uh, African barista competition. And uh, one, one Ethiopian barista stood up and said, I want to do this. And we worked with him uh, to develop a, a, a small presentation. Um, and after just working with him for like an hour to two hours, uh, he, I mean, he didn't win, but his presentation was pretty dope. And, and I saw that, you know, if, if Ethiopia has a competition, um, these baristas are going to be a force to reckon with on the world stage. So, uh, that was very cool to see and be a part of. Um, so yeah, um, the All-Stars Ethiopia was, was, was probably the most impactful, um, but I think my favorite was uh, Guangzhou because, you know, it was my first time uh, as an all-star. I just come off of the 2016 win and it was insane. Uh, I mean, I remember uh, this was back when Alex, Alexandru, uh, the world roasters champ, he had his, is, still yeah. had dreads. And, you know, when we, we had our dreads and the moment we took our dreads down, we were swamped by all these Chinese baristas and coffee professionals interested in who we were. We were signing t-shirts, uh, we were signing phone cases, cups, pieces of paper. Um, I mean, I think James had to pull us away because we were just walking for like an hour and we had other things to do, it was, it was crazy. Um, so that was probably, I probably my favorite. <laughs> Thanks James for your service. <laughs> And um, yeah, thanks, thanks, um, World Coffee Events, and for getting this All Stars program together. Because I think it's it's almost like these champions seem so far away from us. If we don't get the chance to go and physically see a WBC and through this program, we have the champions coming to us. And I know in South Africa, with the All Stars program in Johannesburg, it's like it's been absolutely amazing, and I think it's changed a lot of baristas' lives um, and just coffee professionals in general um i think those were some great questions and i think that final question was a perfect way to end it off um thanks everyone for sending them in and thank you lim for the great answers as always um yeah. the all-star program was so it was established in 2013 to give our such as lim our very decorated world coffee championship competitors a chance to engage with learn from and support specialty coffee communities from all around the world. Like I said, South Africa has benefited from that in a very big way. Um, this, next, this next section of our program is going to look back at memorable moments in the competitions. And this time, we're heading back to take a look at the time Klaus Thompson won the WBC in 2006 in Bern, Switzerland. 2006, I was in... We call it grade 10 or the 10th grade. And I had no idea that there were coffee competitions. So I'm really <laughs> excited to see this and see what it was like. Um, I think you guys are really going to enjoy this as well. Um, let's have a look. Let's check out Klaus. Yeah, my name is Klaus Thompson. I'm uh, the 2006 World Barista Champion from Bern. Uh, today I co-own the Coffee Collective in Copenhagen, Denmark. So I felt on the day, I really felt like uh, I was already in the finals, my goal was achieved, I could kind of relax and I really felt like, okay, today is the day where, where we're gonna like give it everything we got. Um, and serving that final drink was just amazing. I remember like, I remember the judges really interacting and being smiling and friendly. I remember my friends in the crowd who were cheering on. I remember that 
that feeling of like, this is fun. This is fun being on stage, getting to present this thing you worked on for so many months. And then afterwards, uh, I, I, I really remember the, um, like the announcement of the winners, like being there, being so amazingly nervous. And when they finally, I think, lifted my hand or at least like let me know I was the winner, it was just such a burst of emotion. It was completely crazy. Um, I mean, this is 15 years ago and I still <laughs> completely remember the feeling. <laughs>
such a cool video and that's, that looks like a fun wbc um from what i i've heard things were a lot different back then right that was 14 years ago 10 years after you competed lim what a time um as a competitor myself i always look for those old videos just to see what it's like and i think if you dig deep enough you can find some really old wbc videos around right yeah, I actually found some old um, regional videos. I found a video of me competing, but it's on VHS, and I don't have a, ah. I don't have a VHS player, <laughs> so it's been sitting in my closet. <laughs> um, so, so the season of All Stars, folks, is made possible by our season sponsors, who Brewista and Nutramilk, as we saw in Lem's signature beverage video, um, and also supported by Hario, Victoria, Arduino, and Malkunik. Thank you so much for your support, sponsors. Um, we'll now leave you with a special music video from 2017 World Brewers Cup finalist, Michael Manart. Please watch it. It's very good. It's been such a pleasure, pleasure to be your host today, folks. And I hope that you enjoy the final parts of our episode. Uh, Lim, would you like to say goodbye? Uh, thanks a lot for having me. Uh, always good to see you, Winston. Likewise, and, uh, brother. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. I'll see you out there. I'll see you, Lim. Cheers, guys. Cheers, Lim. Okay.